Hello, my name is Olenka Horbach, and I'm curator of Dutch and Flemish and German prints and drawings here in the Department of Prints and Drawings at the British Museum. And welcome to my corner. Today I'll be speaking to you about uh, one of the most important Dutch artists of the 17th century, Rembrandt van Rijn. One of the most remarkable things about Rembrandt is how he drew from life. He was a keen observer of the everyday, and um, that is reflected across all aspects of his art. Um, but in one aspect in particular, in his depiction of women, does his keen study of nature really come across? And his representations of women um, belong to some of his most famous works, some of his most important works. Um, and interestingly, um, early on, already in his lifetime and shortly after his death towards the end of the 17th century, it was his representation of women that elicited the most criticism and the most sort of fierce, scathing accounts of the artist. This is um, a drawing by Rembrandt, a black chalk drawing depicting um, Diana at her bath. And this is one of the first um, drawn representations by Rembrandt of um, a nude model, a nude woman. And this is absolutely done from life around 1630. Um, what's so remarkable here is his attention to detail, his um, representation of the sort of the flesh, the contorted pose of Diana here, um, who's kind of huddled um, in a moment, caught at her bath. Um, and Rembrandt depicts this mythological subject matter of Diana at her bath um, with sort of, he distills the narrative moment down to its essential point. It's just the nude woman huddled. Um, and what's remarkable is that if it wasn't for this detail that he includes in the background, a quiver of bows hanging from a tree, just very roughly sketched in, we wouldn't identify this as a Diana at all. This would just be a woman. Um, and it's this interplay between history and myth and everyday life that's so prevalent in Rembrandt's art um, across all media. And I think it's what makes his work so accessible to us today. In this much later drawing, this is from the 1650s, so just about 10 years before his death in 1669, um, Rembrandt makes this... Um, brush and wash drawing of a woman sleeping. Um, and it's very, very different from the Diana. Um, it's, in his late period, he sort of, um, he moves away from the detailed representation of surface textures, and he distills things down even further. So here, just with very subtle, very brilliant flicks of the brush, he's able to convey this wonderful intimacy and this um, sort of, this wonderful mood that he represents here. So this, commonly known as woman sleeping, this is thought to be Hendrikia Stoffels, who is um, Rembrandt's um, living housekeeper turned common law wife, essentially. Um, and it's this kind of biographical narrative that we have that I think um, comes across in this beautiful and this very um, graceful drawing. And you get the sense that he's watching her sleep in the home. So he's turning into the domestic sphere and he's depicting the things around him. And you see the sort of, through very little detail indeed, he's able to um, suggest her face and suggest her features without detailing everything. And then he kind of loosens up and um, the, stro um, the brush strokes towards the edge of the drawing become almost calligraphic. They're so fluid. Um, so he's playing with depicting detail and sort of suggesting um, the tender moment that's seen here. We turn to Rembrandt's representation of um, one of the most common subjects in um, Western art, the depiction of Adam and Eve, also known as the fall of man. And here, we see the two figures, we see Adam and Eve um, almost in a quarrel. Um, Eve is holding the apple and Adam sort of raises a finger in, to admonish her. And the way Eve's body is depicted, the way the two figures are depicted is so interesting here because very often artists um, in the 16th and 17th centuries would use 
the subject matter of Adam and Eve um, as an opportunity to depict a really beautiful nude woman. And that, of course, has narrative, um, it has meaning in the narrative. The idea that it was um, Eve's beauty that drew Adam to sin um, is a common sort of interpretation of the subject matter. But here, the two figures are not idealized, and it's especially Eve's, um, the figure of Eve, her face as well as her body, that is so contrary to conventional depictions, that is so interesting here. Probably my favorite detail of this print is this tiny little elephant in the background. And we know that Rembrandt saw an elephant. We even know that elephant's name, Hansken. There was an elephant that came to Amsterdam in the 1640s, and Rembrandt went to draw this elephant. And several of these drawings survive, one of which is in our collection. This idea that Rembrandt is constantly drawing from life, drawing from all aspects of life, um, depicting women um, in his studio, in his home, depicting exotic and foreign animals. And here he incorporates that into this very important religious narrative where questions of beauty and um, nudity have theological significance. So by doing so, it's not just an artistic statement, it takes on theological meaning, it takes on almost personal meaning as he's um, depicting his version of the fall, his version of Adam and Eve. Our prints and drawings are not permanently on view, as works on paper are incredibly sensitive to light. They are, however, available for consultation and study in our prints and drawings study room, where I'm currently standing. To see our Rembrandts or any other object in our collection, please do make an appointment, and you can find the relevant information on our website. For more curator stories, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thank you for watching.